Hello there! In today's video, I would like to focus on particle systems in Godot, which is an area that, similar to shaders, often raises plenty of questions. Particles are useful for various effects if we know how to use them. In this video, we will enhance our 3D scene with Snowfall. I'll start by opening the scene that you may remember from the third-person controller series. Last time we added a shield around the character, and I think this time we can temporarily remove it to avoid obstructing the view. So it should be uh, here in character and the shield over there. Get rid of that. Great. The second thing I'd like to do before starting to work on particles is something I should have done a long time ago, and that is to add a world environment to the scene. What we see in the 3D editor is actually a scene lit by the default environment, unless we edit one ourselves as a child note. However, this doesn't work when the game is run, so I'll address this issue right away. Right click, add child node and world environment. And we need to add some environment, click it. And for simplicity, I will activate just, I would say, sky environment to where it is. Oh. Yeah, background, sky. And let's keep it as it is with default settings. So everywhere we can see only a black sky. This is because the snow we want to create will stand out better this way. Later on, we can enhance the sky with a more interesting color. Now, let's finally dive into the snow. Well, not literally, but you know, you know what I mean. We'll add a GPU Particles 3D as a child node and move it slightly above the scene so the snow has a starting point to fall from. So right click again at child node and GPU particles 3D, where is it? Here, okay. And as I said, I'll put it slightly above the surface. So we will, for example, set the Y coordinate to 20. Now it's over here, good. Let's get into setting up the parameters. It will be some th somewhat similar to what we demonstrated in the video about creating particle fire, but some details will be approached differently. Let's start by increasing the particle count, because no one would be impressed by snow made up uh, just of just 8 flakes. Considering the GPUs are quite powerful when it comes to particles, we can afford something like 2000 and later even more. Another significant difference from the previous effects will be the lifetime. Uh, as you may remember, with the fire we significantly shortened the lifetime, uh, pr probably less than one second. That made sense because the particles were moving at a much higher speed and it was necessary to quickly terminate them to maintain the desired flame shape. On the contrary, snow will fall slowly, and we want the flakes to reach the ground if possible. Let's try 5 seconds uh, here for now, and we can adjust the value if needed. Uh, so, to finally see some particles, we need to set up both the particle process material and at least one draw pass. Let's do that. Particle process material, it would be here. Let's create new particle process material and draw passes uh, right over here. One pass is good enough. Let's create a new quad mesh. And it is already going down. Because we have uh, 2000 particles right now, it looks like a solid line, but it's actually a stream of squares all falling down because there is gravity. All right, the third difference compared to the fire will be the emission shape. Because we need the snow to fall across the entire playing area, 
we need to change the shape to box and set the correct dimensions. Okay, it seems the UI changed in Godot 4.2, so it will take some time to find it, but I think it should be in spawn. Uh, yeah, angle velocity. Yeah, of course, emission shape, point, and box. And of course, we want the box to cover this entire area, so it would be 100. Uh, let's keep one here and 100. Okay, now it seems to be uh, just as we expected, but of course there are some details we need to tune. Uh, we'll adjust the particle emission vector because it's sufficient for Snowflake to simply appear with a small initial push in the y direction. Then gravity will take care of its movement and we'll leave gravity at its default value. Okay, so the direction would be most likely uh, here. Uh, direction, no, no, spawn, uh, emission shape, scale. So there's no velocity. Yeah, here, direction, of course, and I said uh, the Y direction. So uh, before we proceed, it would probably be a good idea to do something about the shape of our particles. Snowflakes definitely don't resemble squares, so let's improve them a bit. Here I'd like to point out a very useful add-on that we'll install right away from AssetLib. In fact, I already did that, but let me show you how it looks. Let's switch to AssetLib and find uh, particle. And here it is, Kenny's particle pack. And it's published under the CC0 license, so we are free to use it in any project. So we would simply click it and then click download and install. And if we get back to the file systems, it is right here. And it contains a lot of useful um, a lot of useful sprites we can use and particles. And I selected this one, smoke01 because the list doesn't include a snowflake exactly, but uh, it is pretty similar and looks quite usable. So now we need to find the draw pass we already created before. It should be, uh, let's scroll down right here and create a new material as a standard material 3D. Let's click it and find albedo and we will drag this uh, texture to the texture property. Okay, this is not enough for us of course, so let's make the following adjustments. Let's find transparency and set it to alpha. Now it looks better. And finally in shading we will select unshaded so it wouldn't reflect any light. Of course if we need to color it by some light, we would just revert this change. Okay, snow definitely looks better than before. Let me just move the camera down. Eh, sorry, this way. Okay, eh, this way. Uh, but there is one problem. When we rotate the camera, the quad mesh looks bad from different angles, like this. So we'll solve this by setting up the billboard. Uh, let's scroll down, billboard and mode to particle billboard. And of course, select this checkbox, keep scale. Well, there you go. If you rotate, everything looks just like it's supposed to look. So now rotating the camera isn't an issue and everything is displayed correctly. If you're not too demanding, Perhaps such an effect would be sufficient for you. However, I believe that snow can look even better. For example, it's not very natural for all flakes to fall at the same speed and look exactly the same. Let's add a few random factors to our particle system. I will start with randomizing the initial velocity. It's in our velocity section and let's make it from 10 to 20. Now, angular velocity, it would be nice to rotate the flakes as well. Let's try from 30 to 50. 
Now uh, we need uh, to change the linear acceleration and acceleration would be most likely in linear axel here from 1 to 10. Uh, angle would be nice to set as well from 0 to the full circle 350 degrees and finally let's modify the scale and the scale should be probably in display yeah here it is from uh, let's say 0.5 to 1 and move the camera yeah I think it's better. Uh, perhaps we could increase the number of particles to, let's say, 10,000. This looks very good. Perhaps, uh, by the way, uh, what is this yellow box for? Uh, let's see what happens if we move the camera so the box goes out of view. We'll notice that the particles disappear as well. And they're gone. The box is called the Visibility AABB, uh, which is short for Axis Aligned Bounding Box. And we can find it, at least I hope, in the drawing section. It was there uh, in the previous version. Yeah, it is here. Good. At least something they left at this original position. Um, so, as we can see in the tooltip right here, um, if this box goes out of the camera's view, particles will be deactivated. To ensure that it snows continuously in our scene, we need to enlarge this AABB box. We can do this either manually or using a function in the editor. Let's click uh, GPU Particles 3D and generate AABB and wait for it. Wait for it. Nice. Now, if we uh, run the game, we'll see that the snow is still visible and our character runs through a nice flurry. Let's try running to the edge of the world. Uh, no, sorry, not this. Yeah, this, precisely. Running in the snow. Okay, almost there. Let's just not fall. Okay, and change the camera. And we can see the snowflakes are penetrating through the floor and continuing to fall. Why is this happening? When we have uh, set up the collision shape, the reason is simple. Particles are processed directly on GPU, which has no awareness of the rest of the scene. So we'll address this issue by adding a special child node called GPU Particles Collision Box 3D. Let's do it at child node and the GPU particles collision box. Here it is, 3D. Okay. And we should set up the size. It will be the same as our original collision shape 3D, which is 100 to 1, 100. So let's do the same here. Uh, 1, 100. Okay. Is that sufficient? As we can see, it's not, because we still need to set up the particles to react to collisions. So let's switch back to GPU Particles 3D and in the Particle Material, scroll down and find the Collision section. And currently we can see it's disabled. We have two other options, Rigid or a Hide on Contact. Let's start with the first one. And we can, we can see an interesting effect. The particles are colliding with the collision shape and keep moving until their uh, lifetime is over. Uh, so, in fact, actually the flakes no longer penetrate through the floor, but we are, I'm not sure if this is the desired effect. In case of snow, it's better to choose hidden contact. Now, this is perfect, I would say. It's working. So, let's... Uh, what we can do. We can also try with uh, play with turbulence if we want to give the flag some more interesting trajectories. Let's try to enable that. Alright, it seems to be more like in the wind. 
And then we can, for example, change the noise speed random factor if we increase it to x max value. It seems to be even more natural, I would say. This is, if we, if we run the game, it should be very realistic. Yeah, now it's falling. And I like to run through that. Perfect. So we can say that the snow is working and includes many configuration options that we can later control through a script. And that's about it for snow today. I hope you enjoyed working with particles and next time we can try something like rain, where we could test sub-emitters for the effect of raindrops hitting the ground. Have a great day and see you in the next video.